to interpret the scriptures. And their interpretation of the scriptures would give them the authority to make a judgment about what those scriptures teach. Mm. Right? So like John the Baptist, yeah. he was crying in the wilderness. And what, what was he saying? He was preparing the way of the Lord. What was he declaring? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is coming. Right? And so what's, what's he talking about? He's reading the scripture and he's making a judgment. Right? right? That eternal life is not found in the works of the law or being Jewish according to the flesh. Eternal life is not found in the strength of the flesh. To do, to get, to have, to perform anything. He saw that eternal life was found in God and the work God would do. Mm -hmm. And that God would, a Messiah would come. And that a Messiah would uh, bring eternal life to the earth. Right? And so John was busy preaching that. So he's one with authority. Yeah. And he would have been the legal high priest. If you go back and, and search it out, ah, John, would have, John been, would have been the legal high the, the lawful high priest if they hadn't broken from the law and started doing whatever it is they wanted to do. Really? If it hadn't become like a political thing. Uh -huh. John the Baptist would have been the high priest. Oh, wow. And so when he's sticking his hands on Jesus, he's one with authority. Mm -hmm. Right? And the Holy Spirit, as we all know, is also one with authority. Right? 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 And right. so they convey upon Jesus. And not that Jesus needed to be conveyed upon him, but it's just like a sign. Right? right? Mm -hmm. It's like a picture. Yeah. For people to look at, to yeah. connect with, right? And so then he comes with one with authority to interpret the scriptures, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is what, I mean, Paul yes. describes in 2 Corinthians 3, where it says that uh, in the new covenant, we're ministers of the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. Christian people would be well served to realize there's the letter and there's the spirit. Right. And that the scriptures were never intended to be taught from the letter, they were always intended to be taught from the Spirit, right? Paul, right after he said that in the New Covenant, were ministers of the Spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. And then he says, oh, by the way, the Lord Jesus is the Spirit of the law. <laughs> and so we're ministers of Jesus. And here's the thing that will mess people up. Through the course of ministering Christ and Him crucified, yeah. you are ministering the Old Testament Scriptures. Yeah, yes, right. Because Absolutely. all of the law yeah. and the prophets was all pointing to the Christ and the truth that would be made flesh in him. Right. So as you're ministering Christ and him crucified, as you're ministering how we can't have life by our ability to do, that we can only have life by God giving it to us as a gift, and as we, we, we minister the, the truth about how we're dead to death and alive to eternal life in Jesus, listen, man, we are ministering what the Old Testament scriptures were always talking about. Right? Mm -hmm. We're ministering the promise that has come now. Right? It's no longer a shadow of good things to come. Mm -hmm. It's that the good thing has come. Right? <laughs> right? And so now we're ministering the good thing that has come. Right. But the law and the prophets were all the time still talking about the same truth and how this good thing would come. Right? right. And so now we're ministering the Old Testament scriptures. This, is, this, this will mess people up. If you go read Galatians and Romans and James's letter and Hebrews, and Colossians, and Philippians, and Ephesians. Do you know what they're ministering? The Old Testament Scriptures. Sure. Now, do they sound the same? No. Why don't they sound the same? Because the mystery's been revealed. Yeah. Right. Why was it a mystery? Why couldn't we just read it and see that it was there? Why was it even hidden? We were reading it carnally. We were carnal, sold under sin, right. and we were blind to the spirit of the scriptures. Right? Yes. So we needed a teacher to come who, being filled with the spirit and not carnal, sold under sin, looked at the scriptures with the mind of the spirit instead of the carnal mind. Mm. And then that teacher could come and teach us what was in the scriptures. Mm. That teacher is Jesus. Yes. Right? Mm. right? And so he came teaching what was actually in the scriptures. And then the apostles ran wild with it mm -hmm. in their letters and everything. They established it, right? But if you go and read Paul's letter to the Colossians, it doesn't sound like the Old Testament, but it is. Yeah. Mm. Right? Yes. Right. And so that's one of the biggest things Christian people could be well served in realizing. The word that was in the Old Testament, there's a word that's contained there. We were blind to it. We couldn't see what the word was. We could see a word, and we came to many conclusions about what was written there. That's right. But all of them were wrong. That's why it says everyone had gone out of the way. Right? Paul said, according to the law, he was blameless. Right. Do, do you know what that means? <laughs> He's saying, I did all that. 
That's right. Okay, so the Old Testament, there was a word there. Everybody thought the word that was there is that the Jewish people are the special people of God. The Gentile people are not the special people of God. And these Jewish people are going to have eternal life by the works of their hands to do this law. Right. Paul says he did that law. And he says that didn't do anything for him. Right? Mm -hmm. So we all walked out of the way. The word that was in the Old Testament was not a word about what you're going to do to be blessed by God. It's not a word about how you're going to perform carnal commandments in order to find favor in God. Right. The word that was always there is that God got down on one knee in adoration of man and called them his sons and daughters. Right? And that he has promised us that he would save us from sin and death the sin and death that manifested in our bodies, and he would manifest his glory and immortality in our bodies. Yes. He promised us that. Right. And he promised us that he would remove the sin and death that was in the earth. And then that he would give us an earth that where all and only righteousness dwell. Yes. Now that's what the Old Testament is talking about. Mm -hmm. God promising to save man from sin and death because he loves them. And it pointed to what he would do to save them. Yeah. Right? But we read the Old Testament scriptures. And we thought, well, we got to do this, we got to do that, we got to do the other. I got to find a barley crop, first of all, because I don't even have any barley. So, how, how am I going to make my first fruit offering? Because the first fruit offering has to be barley. Yeah, that's right. I hate, to break, I hate to break it to well intentioned Christian people. You can't just change the first fruit to money. Right. It ain't got nothing to do with money, it was talking about barley. There's a reason why it was called barley. Because barley was the least of all the crops. Do you know who also looked like the least of everyone? Jesus. Well, Paul comes and says Christ is the first fruit. Listen, give all the money you like because you love the church and you want to support the gospel. And you feel a desire to. But don't confuse the money you give with some first fruit offering. There's one first fruit offering. It was Christ being raised from the dead. And presenting himself to God as the first human being that conquered the grave. Now, do you know what that promised God? It gave God a certainty that there was going to be a future harvest ah, of yes, people right. born from the dead, right. Right? right? Which is how it went in the Old Testament scriptures. First, you came with the barley. You brought the first sheaf of the barley to God. And do you know what that promised? The future harvest, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And so that's talking about Jesus, the firstborn from the dead, and then all those who will believe on Jesus when they're also raised from the dead. Now, we looked on that in the Old Testament, and we thought, my goodness, we got to give God some barley, and you know, there's going to be a coming harvest, and we got to give God some... Well, and, and now since we're Christian people and we don't have any barley, it must be money. And now we're going to... We're still doing it. Yeah. So Jesus saw us, and Jesus is looking at those scriptures, he's looking at us, and he's like, scratch his head. Jesus is like, wait a second. The first fruit is talking about God raising me from the dead. Yes. The first fruit is about God promising to raise me up out of the grave. And now he's not going to suffer me to see corruption. That when I take the sin and the death of the world upon me and I'm dying on the cross, he's not going to leave me there. Right. He's not going to forsake me. He's going to come and claim me as his own and raise me up from the dead. And I'm the firstborn from the dead. I'm the first fruit. And I'm going to ascend into the heavenly throne room and present myself to God as the firstborn from the dead. And then that's going to give God a promise of a future harvest of other human beings. So there'll be many sons and daughters of God also Amen. raised from the dead. Amen. So Jesus saw the Old Testament was saying that, and he saw us thinking it's about giving some barley. <laughs> and so he thought, my goodness, man, these guys need help. It's all right? They don't know the ABCs. It's okay. It's okay. We're carnal, sold under sin. He wasn't frustrated that we didn't see the ABCs. He was apt to teach, full of meekness, full of love. He wasn't like, what the hell? I gotta tell the no, no. And so he come mm -hmm. and started revealing the Old Testament scriptures. So the word that was contained in the Old Testament scriptures, that same word is the word that has been from the beginning, even before they made any creation, and it's the same word that was made flesh in Jesus. Yes. That word was made flesh in Jesus. Yes. Right? And so now a carnal people who were fleshly. Mm -hmm. They could behold the spiritual word because it manifested itself in a fleshly body. Right. <laughs> right? Now we can see it with our physical eyes. The word made flesh. Now we can begin to start understanding what word it was that was always there. Right. We can begin to find out what were those scriptures talking about. And we can begin to see which teachings we've been taught about those scriptures that aren't true. 
Because they don't line up with the word that was made flesh in Jesus. It isn't a different word. It's the same word. Right? Yeah. right? That's why Paul said the law was a shadow of the good things to come. It was a shadow of the good things to come. Right? He didn't say it was something different. No. Well, if you guys see my shadow, does the shadow come from me? Yes. Does it still speak of me? Yes. Is it the same thing as me? No. no. Right. And so when I come, are you going to be busy with the shadow or are you going to hang out with me? Hang out with you. Right. You're not going to talk to my shadow. <laughs> right? But the shadow still speaks of me. Right. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Right. That's how the law was. Right. It was a promise. Hebrews talks about how these guys, the hall of faith, they all saw the promise and heard the promise and waited for the promise, right? They didn't get to see the promise, but they waited for it, it says. They looked forward to the promise. We have the promise now, but both scriptures are talking about the promise. Yes. They're both talking about the Christ. Mm -hmm. The animal sacrifices in the law, what are they talking about? Jesus. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. What is the first fruit talking about? Jesus, Jesus being raised from the dead. Right. Do you see yeah. that? What's the Ark of the Covenant talking about? Jesus. Jesus. What is the Holy of Holies talking about? Jesus. Jesus. What's the mercy seat talking about? Jesus. Jesus. What's the manna from heaven talking about? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Everything is talking about Jesus. So it's the same word. It's not a different word. Right? right? But one is the manifestation of the word, the totality of it. Right? Kabam. Here it is. The other one is pointing to it. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we, we get 